So I'm really excited to be here with Jim Courtney, who is the new shape of the shape. How are you, sir? I'm doing quite well. Thank you. <laughs> so I just have to ask you, like, I mean, you obviously know how big of a legacy Halloween is, um, and now you're going to be a part of it going forward. And how does that feel? Uh, it's, you know, uh, a lot. I, I feel a lot of gratitude. Uh, it's, I'm quite honored that um, that that to be a part of this an amazing legacy, to to work with such incredibly talented people. Um, so. Yeah, this sort of came out of left field as do the greatest things in our lives. Yeah. And, um, and so my job here now is to just honor that with, you know, with doing my part as best I can. Right. Well, everybody involved in this particular film is such a fan of the genre and a fan of the original one. So I think it, it looks like they've made every choice very, very deliberately and carefully. Um, yeah. So that speaks to, to, to your talent. And um, Thank you. So how was it um, to work with Nick Castle and kind of bridge the... Oh, that was great. He, he and I have developed such a, just a beautiful rapport. And uh, in the times that we got to do interviews together, we just riffed off each other. He's a very, very funny guy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've just quickly established a beautiful friendship. Uh, so we're, we, and we were hoping at a certain point that there would be a passing of the torch. And I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but the, where we both get to be a part of the same scene and there is. And so for us, that was like, yes, that's what we wanted, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So you're gonna obviously you'll be starting to book change. So now that you're a uh, Officially a part of the of the Halloween universe, um, you know you're going to be going to the conventions and, and interacting with the fans. Is this going to be your first interaction dealing with like the horror fans specifically? Yeah, it is. Uh, years ago, when I did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, I had some um, I had some offers to do that, and I just I was working too much first of all, uh, and secondly, it just didn't appeal to me at that at that time in my life. Um, now I'm really really excited to do it, and and I I mean I love people and I love interacting with people, so that's going to be easy and and. And Nick and I are going to have fun, and, and so I'm, I'm super looking forward to that. And um, how much did you study the first film or, or sit down and talk to Nick about just his process, you know, on, on how he kind of came to, uh, came up with his portrayal of the shape, you know, to kind of meld the two together? Well, you know, I did, I did speak with him, uh, but not until I'd already been on set and, and, and working it. I only watched the film once before my, uh, they put me on tape for an audition, and I watched it once after when I knew I was cast. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get too technical. I didn't want it to right. be coming from my head. Um, Nick and I came from different approaches. Nick just did what he was told, and he happened to be magic. You know, I mean, he's a very talented guy, so of course everything he did was magic. But for me, I come from a more metaphysical place, and so I, you know, had to tap into the energy that exists in the universe, this morphogenetic field that, you know, that is Michael Myers, that is the shape. It's already been created, it exists. So for me, it was a, it's a meditation in going into who Michael Myers is, who the shape is. So there's no motivation, there's no, I'm not, I, I didn't make a checklist like most actors do and, and most, you know, most roles. Um, this was about a vibration and capturing that vibration that Nick created, that John Carpenter created, and then allowing it to synthesize, you know, to be ma made manifest through my body. And, and, you know, with David's direction and Ron Hutchins, the co stunt coordinator, um, we've come up with some pretty fun stuff, I think. That's really great. Um, how did you, because it is, I mean, the, the shape is kind of known as being evil incarnate. So, you know, to tap into kind of that energy, um, is that something that, you know, you tapped into and then had to shake off after the end well, of shooting? Well, you know, I, I, because I have a lot of experience working in morphogenetic fields, um, because I volunteer for a family constellation therapy group that, uh, that, that was, you might be interested, a German Jesuit priest actually created his therapy, oh. studying the Zulu and laid it over a Jungian model. So there's a, very, there's a well worn path into this morphogenetic field. Um, I can go into it with a breath. I mean, I know what I'm going to do. I take a breath, boom, it's in me, and I'm living in it. When the scene is over, whether it's five takes or seven takes or whatever, I stay in that space. Then when I'm done, I breathe out of it, and it's done. I'm back at the gym. Um, people may judge it as evil incarnate. I look at it like this. If a cat kills a mouse, is that evil? No, it's what he does. Right. I'm doing what Michael Myers does, and I have no judgment on it. I'm just doing it. Well, they say the best villains don't know that they're villains. So no, that's kind I, of yeah. A, yeah, that's that's really interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I mean, and it's fun. It's it's fun, like doing, doing living out the shadow side of humanity that most human beings are afraid to look at. Look, man, there's killers in all of us. Yeah. You know, most of humanity does not want to look at this, but so being able to explore that on a visceral level, you know, because our bodies don't know when, when we're acting, our bodies don't know the difference. If we're really committed to that action, our minds and bodies don't know the difference. It's real. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's a powerful, powerful experience. And it seems like with this film, it's a lot more ground, I, grounded in reality than I think some of the latter Halloweens became. Um, you know, I, I watched a scene earlier today with a family and their interactions and dynamic were really, they felt really real, they didn't feel staged at all. And you know, a lot of David's work has been, you know, described as Southern Gothic, which is kind of, you know, dealing with kind of horrible things that come out of re real situations like poverty or crime and things like that. And I was just wondering if any, you know, if, if you're Phil working on this film, because you're working on something like Buffy, which is very um, funny, you know, dark humor, and, and this seems like it's more serious um, and grounded to reality. And I was just wondering if that's been your experience. Well, to be honest with you, um, after, and the script I loved, when I got the script I loved it. It's got just the s nicest level of subtle wit. It's, it's, it sets up really nicely, I believe, for, um, for all the, the, the horror and, the, and, and it pays very, very beautiful homage to, to the original. Um, but I, I, think, I think for me, um, after the second uh, iteration of the script, I just put it down. So I just put it down and I'm, I'm in a space and, and from that point forward, trusting the direction of David Green and the cinematographer, you know, Mike Simmons and Stewie and Paul and, and the stunt coordinator, Ron Hutchins. I mean, these guys, when they, when they pretty much create the sandbox in that particular moment for me, that's where I live. There's, I don't think about it. I'm, I'm just in it and I'm not in it. And, I'm, and I, don't want to over, I don't want to overthink it until the end. Right. You know, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll analyze it to death afterwards. But, 